Good day, this is Jim Patel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics 1. This lecture is entitled Decimal and Binary Numbers. Okay, so last week after I softened you up with a shelling of logic gates, this week I'm going to strafe you with a chain gun of ones and zeros. Uh, we're going to discuss decimal and binary numbers and the conversion between these two systems, and then we're going to move on to a little bit more complicated topics using binary numbers. One of the first things here is, is, yeah, we talked about logic gates last week. We don't really know what they were doing with that data, those ones and zeros. What we're going to try to do this week is learn what those ones and zeros represent. Often, they're used to represent numbers, numerical data, adding information, uh, taking information from a particular sensor and doing something with it. So we are going to start off with a review of decimal numbers. This should be a review topic for anyone that's graduated kindergarten. Don't think you're wasting your time on this though because this is a valid review and everything we learn about decimal numbers and review about decimal numbers it's directly applicable to binary. So we're going to use this vicious little beast up in the upper left hand corner. This guy has got 10 digits, 10 fingers, 10 digits in the decimal system. Coincidence? I think not. And then we're going to go from this decimal system and enter the matrix where there are only ones and zeros. So like I said, 10 fingers, 10 digits. Coincidence? Nope. There are only 10 digits inside our binary, excuse me, inside our decimal system, which we're customary with. That is obviously the digits 0 through 9. We are not limited to, however, to expressing numbers in that range. We can express numbers greater than 9, we can express numbers greater than 0. We're going to express numbers in between those. So how we do that is we add another digit to the left or right of that. And the exact same thing is, happens in binary. Okay, so let's think about what we're talking about in decimal. We're counting 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth, 7, 8, 9. Where do we go to? 10. So we're back to 0 in that first place. We add a 1 there. and 11, this should hopefully be a review, to 19. We've run out of digits in this column. What do we do? Increment the next place to 0. Position. This number in the tens column obviously has more weight than this digit in the ones column. And if we were to keep on counting, we'd get to 100 and then 1,000. And again, these digits in these further left column being from the decimal place, have a different weight. In a decimal system, it's obviously powers of 10. We start at the decimal place, immediately to the left is a power of 10 to the 0. Just like we learned in Electronics 1, anything to the 0 power, it's a 1. 10 to the 1 is a 10. 10 to the 2, 100. 10 to the 3, 1,000. You get the picture. Things to the right of the decimal place are decreasing powers of 10. So what's less than 0? Negative 1. 10 to the negative 1. What is a negative 1? Again, like you learned at uh, basic electronics 1, same thing here. Something to the negative power, 1 times 10 to the 1 below. What does that simplify to? Excuse me, 1 divided by 10 to the 1. It's 1 to the 10. What is that? It's 0.1, decreasing powers of 10. So 1 one hundredth. 0.01, so on and so forth. There's still powers of 10, but they're decreasing powers of 10. So then if I was to give you a number, 123.45, what does this mean in decimal? Well, it means what we're doing is we're taking the digit in the ones place, excuse me, into 10 to the zero place, i.e. the ones place, multiplying it by its positional weight, so 3 times 1, 2 times 10 to the 1, or 2 times 10, 1 times its positional weight, 100, 1 times 100. We're adding those things up. And because we've got numbers to the right of the decimal place, 4 times 0.1, 5 plus 5 times 0.01. What does this mean? Well, 1 times 100, that's 100, plus 20, plus 3, plus 0.4 plus 0.05. So what we'll do is just breaking that decimal number, how we customary, excuse me, customarily express it into its individual powers of 10, its individual weights, and no surprise, 100 plus 20 plus 3 
plus 0.4 plus 0.05 is equal to 123.45 exclamation point because that was awesome okay hopefully a review apply this what is the positional weight of the six in these two numbers by virtue of this six being in a different position than this one they are not the same value okay so we know that there are differences between these numbers for 360 it's 3 times 100 plus 6 times 10 plus 0 times 1 for 61,219 it's 6 times 10,000 plus 1 times a thousand plus 2 times a hundred plus 1 times 10 plus 9 times 1 Okay, so the 6 in this particular case, 6 times 10, the positional weight of that 6 is equal to 60. Positional weight of the 6 in this number is equal to 60,000. What do we review here for decimal numbers? The positional weight is important. Again, how do we develop a full number? It is the summation of the digits multiplied times their positional weight. This is exactly applied to binary. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how binary does this. So in binary, we are limited to two states, namely zero and one. No smoke, smoke. No voltage, voltage. Okay, so similar to decimal, you're not limited to expressing quantities that are either zero or one. If we use positional weight to the left and right of a decimal place, uh, where the, the digit in that position multiplied times its positional weight summated together will give us values beyond that range. Let's just go ahead and do a quick list of similarities between decimal and binary. Okay, decimal, there's 10 digits, 0 to 9. Binary, 0 to 1. Decimal, powers of 10. Binary, powers of 2. For decimal, it's increasing to the left. Decreasing powers of 10 to the right, same thing in binary. Decreasing powers of 2, increasing powers of 2. And exact same thing, the sum of the digits multiplied by their appropriate positional weight is the entire number. Let's go ahead, well, let's just talk about our powers of 2 first off. Let's just do 10. So 10 is 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2. We've already gone over these. Let's compare and contrast with what we've got here. Binaries powers of 2, 2 to the 0, which anything to the 0 power is a 1. 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. So 2 to the 1, it's 2. 2 to the 2, 2 times 2, 4. I bet you thought I was going to write a 2. 2 to the 3rd, 2 times 2 times 2, 8. You're constantly doubling as you go up. Okay, what do you think is next? 16. 32, 64, 128. Let's draw the powers of 2 over them. 2 to the 4, 2 to the 5, 2 to the 6, 2 to the 7th. Okay. Decreasing powers of 2. 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3. What is that? What that is is 1 divided by 2 to the first power, 1 divided by 2 to the second power, 1 divided by 2 to the third power. What is that? That's a half. That's a quarter. That's an eighth in decimal, if you want to do that. 0 0.5, 0 0.25. Fractional representations. So not only can we represent larger numbers larger than zero, we can represent numbers decreasing powers of zero. We can less than zero is negative, but basically numbers smaller than one, okay? Fractional representations of it. Okay, let's just do a simple exercise here. Count in decimal. 0, 1, 2, you know the rest, 9, add a digit, 10, 11, you know the rest, up to 99, add a digit, 1, 0. Same thing in binary. What we've done is exhausted all the digits in that place value, add a digit to the left, exhaust it again, exhaust this column, add a digit. Same thing in binary, 0 count up one add a place to the left one zero exhaust all combinations one zero excuse me one one We've exhausted all possible combinations 
add a digit, count up. Exhausted all possible combinations, count, added another digit, count up. Okay, if you're doing everything correctly, you should notice a pattern forming here. Every other, every two, every four. So if I keep on going every other, and every two, and every four, and every eight, now what do I do? Add another position to the left, where the positional weight of the one to the left is twice that of the one to the right of it. To make things easier and more readable, we often break these things into chunks of four or chunks of eight. What is this thing, zero, when it is broken up into a chunk of four? Well, it's only one bit. So what we're going to have to do is add leading zeros to it. So if we all keep them the same size, they're a little bit easier to read. Okay, This is what I meant about those every four. So look at this. We've got four zeros, four ones, four zeros, four ones, four zeros, constantly repeating themselves over and over and over again. Here's eight zeros, eight ones. Let's just limit it to two bits right now. Okay, so if we are constantly handling them in chunks of four or chunks of eight, we know what to expect. What are the powers of two here? Well, that's two to the zero. That's two to the one, two to the two, two to the three, which are one, two, four, and eight, respectfully. It helps to, again, stay organized this thing. Which one has the most significance? Which one has the least significance? This is the LSB, the least significant bit, it's the smallest one. The one to the left is the MSB, it's the most significant bit, it's the largest one. You can write these backwards if you want. You can write them forward if you want. You can write them up if you want. You can write them down if you want. You can write them any direction you want to, as long as you indicate which one the MSB is, which one is the LSB. I'm going to write them left to right, just like the way that we've been writing decimal numbers. Okay, I'm indicating the MSB is to the left, the LSB is to the right. Sometimes we're going to have to turn them around. I'm going to indicate that I've done so. So let's do a couple examples here. Let's just look at this one right here. Zero, zero, one. 0, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. What is that? That's a 1, that's a 2, that's a 4, that's an 8. The binary number is the digit in the positional weight column times the positional weight summated together. So what is 0, 0, 1, 0? Well, there are 0 8s plus 0 4s plus 1, 2 plus 0 1s, the decimal equivalent of 0, 0, 1, 0 is equal to 1 times 2. It's equal to 2. So what you can do is you can develop a column to the left of this. What does quadruple 0 mean? In decimal, obviously a 0. Count up. What does triple zero one 1 mean? 1. What does double zero one zero 0 mean? We just figured out that example. 2. What does zero zero one one mean? Well, now we're putting a one right here, obviously a three. You can easily fill out the rest of this column. I'm gonna break it up into groups of four, just so it's readable. And so there's with all the decimal numbers, the equivalent decimal numbers to the left-hand side of our four-bit binary representation. And let's just do a couple examples here just to show what's going on. Let's do that one. Okay, the number that we're putting in there is one, one, zero, one, zero. So there's one, times 2 to the 3, or 1 times 8, 0 times 2 to the 2, or 0 times 4, 1 times 2 to the 1, or 1 times 2, and 0 times 2 to the 0, or 0 times 1. So 1 times 8, 8 plus 0 4s, plus 1 2, plus 0 1s. 8 plus 2 is 10. Does that match what we thought it would? Yes, it does. Now go ahead and look at this number, 1, 0, 1, 1. Go ahead and find the decimal equivalent of 1011. And the answer is the decimal equivalent of 1011 is 1011. Because what I failed to tell you is, is I meant 1011. <laughs> Tricky, huh? You're going to run into these problems a lot. Am I in decimal? Am I in binary? How we do this, how we often do this, is we indicate our base. When I say 1011, and I mean 1011, I'm going to put the base 10 next to it. And if I mean 1011, 
base 2 binary equivalent, I'm going to put that little subscript 2 next to it. Just be aware of this when you see this in text. Obviously, you're not going to see this on the streets. No one's going to tell you, I want 1011 base 2 dollars. You owe me that. Okay, they're going to send it, you owe me $1,011. Let's just use that example, 1011 base 2 now. 1011 base 2, obviously, one more than 10. It's 11. So this illustrates a pretty neat property here. Anytime you see a number in the LSB, a 1 in the LSB, in the 2 to the 0 place, or the 1's place, it's odd. So if you've got something in the LSB to the 2 to the 0, the 1's place, and you're getting an even answer, you're wrong. Check those things out. It's a means of error checking. The other thing is, is 1, 0, 1, 1, left to right, MSB, LSB. What if you mistakenly took the LSB as the MSB? and vice versa. Basically, you're reading it backwards, whether you think that's the MSB and that's the LSB, and you're going this way. The answer is wrong, 1101. You're trying to say 11, but what you're actually sending is 1814, no twos, and a one. You're actually sending the number 13. It's incorrect. You've done it wrong. Okay, so it's absolutely important to identify the MSB versus the LSB, and especially when it comes to wiring things up. For example, you've got this number, which is being output on parallel data lines. For example, a counter. It's currently at state 0, 0, 0, 0. And then it counts up. It goes to state triple zero one. What is the LSB? That's the LSB. That's the MSB. And if I was to feed this data into a decoder, which we'll go into a little bit here, that drives a seven-segment display. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven segments. I would expect to see the number one appear on the display. What if the number eight shows up on the display when I've counted up from zero to one? I guarantee what you've done is you've inadvertently swapped the LSB input excuse me, LSB output of the counter to the MSB of the counter, of the, uh, the uh, display, deco uh, display decoder. Because what is 1, 0, 0, 0, MSB to LSB? Well, it's 1, 0, 0, 1, 8, 0, 4s, 0, 2s, 0, 1s. It's equal to 8. It's critical to stay organized in these things. If you're getting if you know you're inputting, inputting the number 1 and you're getting out the number 8, you've swapped MSP for LSB. And again, this is a critical uh, task for uh, critical troubleshooting skills to, uh, to identify, is divide them into chunks. Here's the counter. By the way, that's a counter right there. Here's the decoder. Here's the display. You're dividing them up into functional areas. If you know you're putting in that data, there should be that data, triple zero to one, MSB to LSB there. Dividing it up into chunks, figuring out where that troubleshooting is and the uh, where the problem is. Critical to this task is just getting the pinouts for those for those particular coder, decoders and counters on the seven segment displays. Okay, just using those maps and troubleshooting and checking your work. Dividing it up into functional areas. Don't troubleshoot the whole thing at these dividing lines, these interfaces between systems, that's where you want to start. If it's to the left, the, the problem is don't shoot or troubleshoot things to the right. Okay, let's just do a couple more examples here. What I've given you is an 8-bit number. I want you to go ahead and binary, base 2. I want you to go ahead and give me the decimal equivalent of this 8-bit binary. You get to a chance to use your first slang too, by the way. 8 bits, that's a commonly packaged uh, common size for computer systems. It's so common it's given its own slang term called a byte, B-Y-T-E. And just because somebody wanted to be a jackass, four bits is called a nibble. If you use that term in my class, I'll punch you hard. Don't use that. Eight bits is a byte. So I'm sending you eight bits MSB to LSB. Basically, I'm telling you the one on the left is the MSB. What is 
the decimal equivalent. So I know the MSB is to my left, LSB is to the right. Just go ahead and put it in a format you can recognize where the positional weights are above it. Ones, twos, fours, and eights. Okay, previous examples, we kind of maxed out there. What's the next power of two? 16, two times 16, 32. Two times 32, 64. 64 times two, 128, so on and so forth. If I wanted to expand this to two bytes of data, i.e. 16 bits, okay, I can keep on doing that. Don't worry about doing that right now. There are no 128s. There are no 64s. There are no 32s. There are no 16s. There is an 8. There's no 4s. There is a 2. There are no 1s. What is our value in decimal? It's 10. Okay, so this is just illustrating I'm padding out that information with uh, now that the representation of 10 in an 8-bit notation, straight binary, is quadruple zero, one zero, one zero. Okay, let's do something very similar to what we've just done. This is example two, one zero, one zero, quadruple zero. Okay, same kind of number. All I did was take the one zero, one zero, put it over there, took the quadruple zero, and put it over there. Like I said about swapping MSB and LSB positions, swapping within that number will give you an entirely different number. So there is one 128, there is a 32, there are no 64s, there are no 16s, there are no 8s, there are no 4s, there are no 2s, there are no 1s. What do you get? 160. Let's do modify it ever so slightly. Like I said earlier, if there's something in that LSB, i.e. the 1s position, it's odd. So when 128 and 32 are incremented by 1. What do we get? 161. Okay, so let's have a brief discussion about range here. We were previously using 4 bits. And notice how we have 16 positions. And some of y'all may be like, wait a second, man, we're not, we're maxing out at 15. Well, yeah, we have 16 positions because I'm counting 0 as a position. I am max out at 15 though, because zero is one of those positions. What I'd like to do is kind of give you a, a little bit of a formula for the number of bits. N equals number of bits. The number of positions is equal to two to the N, but the max number is equal to the two to the N minus one, because zero is one of those positions. How many positions can I represent using, how many different numbers of positions can I represent using 8 bits? I want to know the number of positions, and what is the max number? So 2 to the 8th is 256 different positions. What is the max number I can represent? 2 to the 8th minus 1, 255. Okay, let's go ahead and see if that's true. If I'm using 8-bit notation, I'm maxing them out, 128 plus 64, plus 32, plus 16, plus 8, plus 1, 4, plus 1, 2, plus 1, 255 is my maximum number. However, because 0 is included within that range, I have an additional space that's 256 numbers of positions. And if I wanted to do this column over, all I would have to do is keep on adding 16 zeros with 16 ones, 32 zeros, 64 zeros, 128 zeros. I don't have that time to do that. Uh, what we're going to kind of try to do is stick to some readable ranges here. And let's just give you some challenge problems here real quick, see if you can work on these. Okay, go ahead and pause the recording and see if you can go ahead and give me the decimal representation of these following 8-bit binary numbers, where this is the MSB and that is the LSB. If you've gone ahead and paused the recording, hopefully you're going to go ahead and get the same answers that we did. Notice I took away one of those abilities to, uh, one of those helpful things. It's the powers of 2 over it. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And this one, there's 164, there's 116, there's 14, there's 11. What do I get there? 85. And this one is 32 plus a 2, so that answer is 34. This last one is 16, plus 8, plus 4, plus 1, should be the decimal equivalent, 29. 
one quick thing too about these uh, ranges and maximum numbers I was talking about. For our 8-bit binary system, the maximum number of positions is 256, and the maximum number I can represent is 255. Let's say, for example, I was adding two 8-bit binary numbers, let's say 254 with 2, I'm going to get an answer, 256. Can I represent the number 256 with 8 bits? The answer is, is no. What I've entered is what's called an overflow condition. If the number of bits required exceeds the number of bits allocated. Okay, that's what's known as an overflow condition. Again, we're adding two numbers of the same sign, and we'll talk about subtracting a little bit here. But uh, basically what i am done, I've, I've stepped beyond the range of my particular device. If you would expect if you're going to be adding larger numbers together, you would need to expand beyond 8 bits. One thing I wanted to discuss a little bit more is the uh, fractional representation here. Just to uh, do a quick thing on things to the right of the decimal place. As I previously said, things to the right of the decimal place, they are decreasing powers of 10. 2 to the negative 1, 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3rd. I can I'll represent, so 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, decimal equivalent of those, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125. If I kept on going, 0 0.0625. Uh, I can represent numbers less than 1 greater than 0 fractional representation by using these decimal places to the right. So for example, if I wanted to represent the number 1.5, so here is 1.5, that's base 10. In base 2, what I'm going to do is 2 to the 0, that's a 1. 2 to the negative 1, that's 0.5. It's got a 1.1 in base 2. It's the same thing as 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0.5, 1.5. What if I want to express the number 1.25? Well, there are no powers of 0.5. There is a power of 0.25, 1.25. Now, what if I wanted to express 1 and 5 eighths? It's the, I can express fractional representations in, in binary also. What is 5 eighths? Well, it's a half plus an eighth. That's 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125. That's our eight, eighth, excuse me. So it's one there, one there, no 0.25s, one there. There's our decimal place. One dot point one zero one. So that's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.125, 1.625, which is one and five eighths. Okay. Last thing before we close out this portion of the lecture about decimal and binary numbers. How does a timing diagram, how does a counter display what its binary number is? Let's so use these outputs here. Okay, what I'm going to do is display it. I'd say I've got a four bit binary counter that is expressing its outputs MSB to LSB on an oscilloscope. So you take your four channel oscilloscope, the MSB, put it on one channel. The next one, next one, next one, LSB put it on another, the final channel and display them in relation to each other. What does the number 0 look like for 4 bits? It should be 0, 0, 0, 0. What's the number 1 look like? 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, one, you get the picture. State four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's counting. That's exactly what it's doing. It's counting in binary. And if I took these outputs and sent them to a decoder, what I could do is display this thing perhaps. However, we'll, we'll talk about uh, BCD and uh, four bit binary because now we're going into 10. We're going to need two displays to display those two digits right there. Oh, so here's a exercise. What is the state of the counter right here? What happens here? What is the state of the counter right here? 
So let's go ahead and do that. The state of our counter is 1, 1, 0, 1. The MSB for a 4-bit system is 8. Then it's a 4. There are no 2s. There's a 1. 8 plus 4 plus 1. We are currently in state 13. What happens here? It went from 1, 1, 1, 1, which is 15, all the way back to 0. It's counting over again. It counted from 0 to 15. It recycled. It counts from 0 to 15 over again. Okay, that's what's known as a recycle. Count from 0 to 15. Count from 0 to 15. Just constantly doing the same thing over and over again. Finally, what was this last one? Looks like we were in state 0. 1, 1, 1. What is that? That's a 4, a 2, and a 1. 7. It's in currently in state 7. What does a counter do? It counts. How you output these things, staying organized, is absolutely essential. If the purple one at the bottom here, if that's the MSB, what would happen if I mistakenly displayed it there? On your oscilloscope, what you'd be reading is 1, 0, 1, 1. That's not state 7. 1, 0, 1, 1 is 8, 2, 1. That's state 11, so that's wrong. And it's not like the counter is outputting incorrect data. You're interpreting that data incorrectly. So staying organized, not only within your circuit, but how that circuit is displayed on the oscilloscope. You got four channels, you got four colors, and guess what? They're called channel 1, 2, 3, and 4. Why don't you put them in a readable, logical format? So just a brief application of the counters here. Just a quick challenge exercise. See if you can take a timing diagram and draw what it would look like if it counted from 0 to 9, and then recycled and counted from 0 to 9. OK, let's go ahead and see what that would look like. And what you get, look something like this. I know I haven't filled out this portion of it. But look at what we've got here is it's got quadruple zero, triple zero one, double zero one zero, so on and so forth. We're getting up to state one zero zero one nine, recycling to zero 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 zero. So that's what a time and diagram from a zero to nine counter would look like. One thing while we're on the subject here. You may see this in lab. The 0 to 9 counter obviously counts from 0 to 9. There is a glitch state of 10. OK, what does the binary representation of 10? It's 1, 0, 1, 0. So what you're going to see is this brief moment in time where the binary counter, 0 to 9 counter, accidentally enters state 1010, zero, one, zero, which is the signal for it to recycle. Okay, that's what's known as a glitch state. We're going to go back into this encounters, but be aware you may see this inadvertent pulse because 1010, zero, one, zero, it's not a 0 to 9 counter. It's briefly entering that state. It's an erroneous state, but it's only very briefly. Okay, so it's known as a glitch. So we have just covered a bunch of stuff about decimal and binary numbers. We talked about range. We talked about max numbers. We talked about taking binary and converting it to decimals. So let's go ahead and do the reverse. Let's convert decimal to binary. Okay, so there's two main methods of doing this. Uh, the sum of weights, sometimes called the trial and fit method, and the repeated division by two. In the case of um, decimals, you have to do multiplication by two. Not decimals, uh, fractionals. This is kind of my favorite. I'm going to go over both methods. Uh, the reason why I like sum of weights just kind of makes sense to me. I'm not going to give you numbers beyond 8 bits to do this. You have to be able to do this without your calculator, too, by the way. Uh, conversion of decimal to binary and binary to decimal. And some of the other codes we're talking about where you're going to have to do this without your calculator. I'll show you tricks with your calculator to check your work. But this sum of weights, trial and fit, is one of my favorite methods because it's very usable to me, very easy. Just take your list of powers of 2. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 and to see how many of those things can fit in the number you're trying to convert. Let's put an example here. So let's try the number 
56. Are there any 128s in 56? No. Are there any 64s in 56? No. Are there any 32s in 56? The answer is, is yes. Okay, because if I have 56, there's definitely 32 in there. And if I subtract 32, there's only 24 left. So now I started with that number. I subtracted a power of 2, the largest power of 2 I can get into there. And now I'm left with a remainder. Begin again. Are there any 16s in 24? Yes, there is. And there's 8 left over. Are there any 8s in 8s? You're darn right, there's an 8 in there. And there are no 4s, there are no 2s, there are no 1s in 0. Check your work. 0, 1, 28s, plus 0, 64s, plus 1, 32, plus 1, 16, plus 1, 8, plus 0, 4s, plus 0, 2s, plus 0, 1s, 56. So the sum awaits example, uh, example 2. So let's try 78. There are no 128s. There is a 64. Redo this column right here. 78 minus 64 yields 14. Are there any 32s in 14? No. Are there any 16s in, 16s in 14? No. Are there any 8s in 14? Yes, there is. Are there any 4s in 6? Yes, there is. Are there any 2s and 2s? Yes, there is. 0. Check your work. 64 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2, 78. OK, next example, 290. Gotcha. Can I represent 290 in 8 bits? No, I cannot. It's out of my range because the maximum I can represent in 8 bits is 255. Okay, so let's try a different number. 93. It's odd. What do you think is in this position right there? Probably a 1. Let's go ahead and see if that's true. So are there any 128s? No. There is a 64. So 93 minus 64 is 29. Are there any 32s in 29? No, but very close, but not there. Are there any 16s? Yes, there is. Give me 13 left. Is there any 8s in 13? Yes, there is. 5 left over. Are there any 4s in 5? Yes, there is. Minus 4, yielding 1 as a remainder. Are there any 2s in 1? No, there is not. Is there any 1s in 1? Yes, there is. It makes sense. We're ending with a 1 in that 2 to the 0 or the 1 column. Check your work. 64 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1, 93. The sum awaits or trial and fit. You can kind of see why they call it the trial and fit. You just check out every single one of these things. Almost sounds like a routine. Almost sounds like a computer could do that. Actually, the better routine is this uh, division by 2. It's not my favorite method. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do that for these same uh, numbers here. We should come up with the same value. Division by 2, as the name implies, you divide it by 2. Okay, so the division by 2 method is uh, very systematic in nature. Again, lends itself to computer applications. This is actually how your calculator does it. Let's start off with 56. Let's see if we get the same value. 56 divided by 2 yields 28 with a remainder of 0. And that is your LSB. And we're going to work our way down until we get the whole number quotient is 0. And you'll see what I mean by that. So now you take 28. 28 divided by 2 is 14 with a remainder of 0. Take 14 divided by 2. It's equal to 7 with a remainder of 0. Now, take 7. What do you think we're going to do? Divide by 2. It's going to go in 3 times, but it's got a remainder of 1. Take 3 divide it by 2. 2 is going to go in there one time, but it's got a remainder of 1. Finally, take 1 divided by 2. It goes in 0 times with a remainder of 1. So stop when you get a 0 there. Read it from MSB to LSB. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. 
for using 8-bit notation, I've got to fill in those first two places with zeros. So that is repeated division by 2. Let's go ahead and do the same example, 78. Let's see if we come up with the same value. Okay, start with the number 78. What are you going to do for the division by 2 method? Obviously, divide it by 2. It's going to be 39, remainder 0. 39 divided by 2 goes in 19 times the remainder of 1. Again, that is our LSB. 19 divided by 2. How many times does that go in there? 9 times the remainder of 1. 9 divided by 2. How many times does 2 go into 9? 4 times the remainder of 1. Take that number. 4 divided by 2. How many times does it go in there? 2. Remainder 0. 2 divided by 2. How many times does that go in there? 1. Remainder of 0. Finally, how many times does 2 go into 1? It goes in 0 times. Stop. The remainder of 1. Read it. MSB to LSB. What we get is 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Exactly what we got before. 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. Because we want to go ahead and represent an 8-bit form. Add a padding zero to the zero to the uh, to the MSB. Uh, I will go ahead and la illustrate this last one right here. Ninety-three. Okay, start with the number ninety-three. Divide it by two. You get forty-six. The remainder of one that forms our LSB. Already kind of making sense. We go. We got a one right there. It's odd. Forty-six divided by two goes in twenty-three times. The remainder of zero. Twenty-three divided by 2. It was an 11 times with a remainder of 1. 11 divided by 2 goes in 5 with a remainder of 1. 5 divided by 2 goes in 2 times with a remainder of 1. 2 divided by 2 goes in 1 time with a remainder of 0. 1 divided by 2 goes in 0 with a remainder of 1. The number 493, the binary number 493, MSB to LSB should be 1, 0, 1, one, one, zero, one. Just what we got the last time. One, zero, one, 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 zero, one. Make it eight bits by adding a leading zero to it. Either method you use, it does not matter to me as long as you get the correct answer. Speaking of the correct answer, how do you go ahead and do some practice with this? Your calculator. Your calculator does this for you. Okay, I'm going to give you guys the reference using the TI-89, the Texas Instruments TI-89 Titanium Edition Graphing Calculator, because that's the one most of you guys use. If you got a different calculator, too bad, uh, figure it out yourself. Okay, so here's the basic steps on using your calculator to go ahead and check your work. Let's go ahead, and I want to convert the decimal number 8 to binary. Okay, so just go ahead and do your catalog, and what you're going to do is press B. And you're going to look up to this thing that looks like it's got an arrow and it says B I N. Okay, assuming your base in your mode is set to decimal, what you're going to do is press the key 8, go to the catalog, find that bin, and what it's going to do is going to convert it. Press enter, and what do you get? Error, domain error. Okay, the reason why you're getting the error domain error is because the calculator is doing this. this this uh, exact representation. It's using that division by two, and chances are you've gotten an approximate. What you want it is in the exact mode. So go ahead and press your mode key. It's on the F2, page two there. Walk down, it's kind of the second to last one. Change it from approximate to exact. And when you come back to electronics class or any other class that you might be working with, you might want to change it back to approximate. Be aware that that's the problem. So now that you've got an exact mode, press eight, bin, what is it going to spit back? It's going to spit back 0B. 0B, that's not part of the number. It's telling you that's the base. And what it's spitting back is 1, triple, 0. It's almost like this base thing, it's saying, hey, it's I'm not saying 1,000. I'm saying 1, triple, 0, binary. How do I take a binary number and convert it to decimal? Just put in 0 B. So you're going to have to use your alphabet key there to write that lowercase b. Say 0B. And whatever you string after this, 1001, it knows you are talking about base 2.
press enter. Well, if you are set up in decimal mode, it's going to convert it all to decimal. Nine. So use your calculator to go ahead and help you out. So just example, zero B, just do a string, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, one. It's going to spit back 153. So you are not allowed to use your calculator on the exams and quizzes for this binary conversion. You have to do this yourself. What I'm showing you this is, this is a great means of checking your work. All right, before I bring this thing to a close, I know it's getting a little bit long here. I just want to, again, introduce a brief discussion of VHDL, the hardware definition language, which we'll be using later. You can express numbers in VHDL in binary and in decimal and hex and octal. But I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how to do that is um, if I just put in 1001, it's going to think it's a decimal. What you need to tell it, B for binary put it in quotation marks one zero zero one one zero zero anything within those quotation marks it is binary so that's what's called a bit string literal and there's an, basically the exact same way of doing this it's called a based literal it does the exact same thing base two number sign one zero zero one one zero zero one Number side. They perform the exact same thing. It's just your choice. Uh, how does it express numbers? Uh, there are two ways of doing this: is uh, integer and real numbers. So it's 32 bits for an integer number. So there's a certain range. What is that range? A lot. When you can express a number in four uh, in 32 bits, the number is four two nine four nine six seven two nine five that's my maximum number with a bunch of commas in there so there is our kilo there's our mega there's our giga so gigabit so that's where we get these things i know there's a little bit of messiness there it's actually kind of closer to 4.3 in computer speak you're going to be using the closest powers of one, two, four, eight. Uh, there's also, I mean, if you're going to be using signs too, if there, if that is the number of positions, um, excuse me, that's the maximum number of the positions. Uh, if I want to do negative numbers, I can represent a range from negative 2 billion, 147, 483. You don't have to remember these numbers. I'm just showing you that there's a, a up to 147, 483. Six, four, seven. There's a range of what it can represent. Finally, the real. Uh, reals have a decimal point, and it's almost kind of like scientific notation. So uh, if I want to represent a large number like 8,000, it's 8.0E3. So it's got to have that decimal place and that exponent value. So it's the mantissa with a decimal place and the exponent. So let's bring this thing to a close here. Just a quick brief review of what we did. We went over decimal numbers, went over binary numbers, we went over to binary to decimal conversion. Uh, we went over decimal to binary conversion using two different methods, the sum of weights and the division by two. We talked about fractional representation. We talked about some time end diagrams used for counters, uh, for a zero to 15 counter, a zero to nine counter with a little bit of a glitch in there. And finally, we wrapped this thing up with a discussion of how to uh, represent numbers inside VHDL. Okay, this concludes this portion of it, and now we're going to go ahead and go into arithmetic operations with binary numbers.